Floor, please. Oh, what a shot. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Four Please Now Driving, the official Masters podcast. I'm your host, Marty Smith from ESPN. Wednesday at Augusta means the excitement of the Par 3 contest, during which the players create lasting memories with their families, their wives and children dressed in Masters caddy suits, and sometimes putting for their father or even taking a tee shot. Our leader, Ricky Fowler, is on the ninth tee. Overcome by the stress and pressure leading the par three. Ricky Fowler won the 62nd par three contest with a five under par 22, and with it earned the priceless engraved crystal bowl that goes to the victor. Speaking of crystal, five different players hit holes in one, tying the second most in tournament history. Victor Hovland, Luke List, Sepp Straka, Lucas Glover, and Gary Woodland all hit holes in one. Woodland's round Wednesday is especially poignant. The major champion underwent surgery last year to remove a lesion on his brain. He told me that his greatest takeaway from the par three experience in 2024 was simply being here. The ability to stand in that moment, holding his children's hands, able to come back and play the game he loves alongside the people he loves. Wednesday also means Augusta National Chairman Fred Ridley offers his annual address to the assembled media and the world. Despite the current divide in professional golf, Chairman Ridley is optimistic about its future. I believe everyone agrees there is excitement in the air this week. The best players in the world are together once again. The competition will be fierce. Families are reunited and friendships will be renewed. The best golf has to offer is on center stage. That is good for everyone, certainly players, but also our partners, volunteers, the Augusta community, and its many local charities, and especially our patrons and fans around the world. As solutions are pursued to bridge the current divide in men's professional golf, I hope there will be a focus on these and the other stakeholders who are the fabric of tournament golf, all who represent the values and virtues of the game. It is this culture that makes golf the greatest game. That is our focus once again this week, and it will always be for many years to come. There is certainly no greater host to display golf's majesty than Augusta National. It's always such a pleasure to spend time with my, my great friend, Hallie Ledbetter, uh, golf commentator. First, hello. It's so nice to see you. Hello. It's been a year. It has been. <laughs> it has. How's your master's experience been so far? Oh, it's been fantastic. I got to go yesterday with a friend, and it was her first time oh, it's at Augusta. And, and you know, and you just, it's always fun, no matter however many times you've been there, but to get to experience with someone when it's their first time and take them to the merchandise shop and ha watch them try their first tomato cheese sandwich and it, walk them down to Amen Corner. It was just, it was amazing. It really is. Uh, it's a common refrain with anyone with whom you speak that has had the blessing of coming that it doesn't matter if it's your second time or your 20th, but the first is always such a surreal experience yeah. because it's almost sensory overload. Yeah, I, I remember my first time. I think I was uh, I think I was 12 or 13. I came with my mom. My dad was working with a couple of players, and uh, I think we were on 15 fairway on the crosswalk, and my mom had me hold an umbrella and hold, pose with, like, my finish as if I was hitting a shot oh, into the I green. And uh, everybody was – it was just really neat. The, everybody started doing it as well. It was really cool. Well, we finished the par three uh, on Wednesday. Ricky Fowler wins, and I'm thrilled for him. I mean, he's such a good person. What's mm -hmm. been your experience with Ricky? Ricky is just amazing. You know, it's funny because I've 
gotten to know Ricky over the years, sort of been, having been in that uh, Jupe life, if you will, Jupiter, Florida scene. And growing up, you know, I grew up with my dad teaching Michelle Wee and a lot of really great players, and she lived down there. So I would go down there and get to spend some time with that crew. And just such a, a such a humble guy. It's been really neat to see him mature as a person, as a player, you know, even his fashion, you know, has changed over the years to go from the flat brim cap. It's definitely <laughs> evolved. But it, I mean, to see him as a dad, it's just it's been really, really cool. And to also to see him get his, you know, go through the, the that, that slump, if you will, for lack of a better oh, term. No, there, and, it was a slump. Yeah. And for, to now to see him like playing some good golf again is, is really exciting. One thing that I love and someday I want to do this story for ESPN. I would love to sit down Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas and Ricky Fowler together as a threesome and ask them the impact that the other two had on them when they went through their drought because their so, their friendship is so cool to see and they, they've always been there for one another and each of the three of them have had these stretches where they weren't playing well while the other two either were playing very well or coming out of their own issues. So someday I want to do that story. I love that. I can't wait. <laughs> you you mentioned the fact uh, how wonderful it is to see Ricky as a dad. I got to see Brooks Kepka as a father for the first time this afternoon at the practice green before the first tee of the par three. I was interviewing a bunch of guys before they went to play. And Brooks walked down with Jenna, his wife, and crew, his brand new little nugget son, S cutest little guy. And I asked him about the new perspective that you have about the blessing of playing the game at the level he plays it when you become a dad. And it's so fun to see Brooks say, yeah, you, you realize real quick, this is not about you. Mm -hmm. And so it is fun to see those, those guys in a cross sport mm -hmm. have that type of experience it'll be interesting to see how that impacts brooks play i just think he's such a steely competitor especially on these stages i think he's the best major championship golfer alive right now and he seems to prove that time and again what what do you expect from the field as we make our way towards tournament play thursday hopefully weather fingers gods crossed knock on wood <laughs> yeah i mean i i was talking about this earlier uh, today with a couple people, I think that you know, check not only is the rain is the rain coming, but also the wind, so which will be really interesting because I can't remember the last time we've had like a super windy master. So I'm really interested to see how the course is is going to play. But I'm really excited to see you know the Scotty Shufflers uh, see how he fares. I mean, he's playing so fantastic. I don't think anybody can you know I don't think anybody can really compete with him I, I read something the other day that said okay if Scotty's putting is off he'll win by two right. if his driver's off then he'll win by by three if it's you know just saying that he he's so far ahead in so many categories there's no possible way anybody can catch him so in terms of like someone that I I, I feel silly to say that to, that that I would pick anybody else but Scotty to win but I'm really excited to see a guy like Akshay Batia to see how he's doing. I mean, I know he dislocated his shoulder when he when his when he fist pumped I mean, last sometimes, week. Sometimes, look, Hallie. Sometimes we get so fired up we dislocate. Yeah, our shoulder. exactly. It happens, right? And he deserved it. I mean, it stinks that he got hurt, yeah. but what a tremendous performance by him, mm -hmm. and and to earn your way into the Masters with a, a buzzer beater victory. I know, and it was really cool. Ryan. I don't know if you uh, if you heard this, but he did an interview earlier in the week at the Valero where somebody asked him about the drive, hip, and putt because we all know he's the first person to play in the drive, hip, and putt and then qualify for the Masters, which is which is so cool. And I'm sure we'll be seeing that more and more as as uh, as the years go on. But they watching asked, those young kids, I mean, it's remarkable. Oh my! Gosh. There's going to be a lot of those young people there, in the Masters. Uh, there somewhere. was a young girl that I think she drove it like almost 270, and I was like, wow, okay, <laughs> I need to get in the gym. <laughs> That's crazy. But they, but um, I think the interviewer asked. Um, Akshay about the drive trip and putt and he said it's going to be so cool to drive John Magnolia Lane this year I mean next year or whenever it happens <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a little insight into like wow does you know just subconsciously does, did he have that belief that he was going to go into Valero and just uh and just bring it home in order to be here so 
I, I'm really excited to see how he fares. I think probably the adrenaline will just cancel out for the shoulder. He's probably just so excited to be here. So. It's, I mean, it's a stacked field. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see the the live guys and the PGA Tour yeah. guys back together in this great field with John Rahm John defending Rahm. his Masters Championship, Rory McIlroy chasing the career slam and his first green jacket. I'm sure he hasn't heard a single thing about that. I'm sure he hasn't. I know somebody asked me, we were talking about, okay, who do you – who, I think, who do you think's going to win and who do you want to win are two very different questions. <laughs> and so who do I want? I would love to see Rory, but I think I we think all every, would. I think we would. we all would love to see Rory finally get it done. So, I think it was 2017. He told me if he didn't have a green jacket in his closet before he was done, he'd never be fulfilled. And then I just chatted with him at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, what is that, a month ago mm -hmm. or so? And his perspective over these 10 years since his last major championship victory, the evolution of him back to being a dad yeah, I was and a here. husband. And you see Bobby. the evolution of the person. And he's such a great ambassador. And he's the voice of the PGA Tour. And so yeah, I think so many people would be so thrilled to see him have that moment. I do. What of all the amazing things you've experienced here is your most cherished moment? Wow, that is such a great question. Well, I think um, getting to – probably going back to getting to spend my friend's first time at, at Augusta was really, really special. But also I think it's been really special over the years getting to come out, and uh, my dad's not here this year, but getting to watch my dad work with some of the best players in the world has been really cool. I mean, you know, my dad is such a fantastic golf instructor, but to see him sort of in his element – working with you know some of the the greatest players in the world and it, the the Ernie Elses and the the Nick Faldos and the Nick Prices and decent uh, little yeah list, d d decent but it but it was really <laughs> cool because I think just growing up he's obviously you know just he's, dad. he's my dad but to be able to see him out here and I've seen him you know be on the range and just uh, it, it was just like a really proud moment for me so sometimes I, sometimes I forget that he's like he is who he is and he's just my dad so um so yeah so I'd say over the years it's been really special to to be able to to, to be out here even um in the last couple of years when I've been out here on behalf of Golf Digest and to be like look at me doing my job look at you doing your <laughs> job <laughs> look at us <laughs> yeah, but it's so fun uh, we discuss often this generational impact of this tournament the Masters has this way of passing down the love of the game because it's one of those transcendent events that whether you're a golf fanatic or a peripheral fan or somebody who pays attention once a year, this is what you're paying attention to. And so you might be sitting on the couch with your father or your mother or both and have the, the, the beginnings of a bond. Mm -hmm. How I'm, Obviously the game bonded you and your father. But yes. What, what is that bond? Well, you, you know, it's... It's one of those things I think growing up, it, we, it was golf was always the topic of, of conversation. And that's how we spent our time together after school. And growing up, I, I did not like golf very much, <laughs> but it ultimately became uh, something that I did very, very much love. And my brothers also being very good players. But, um, but yeah, I just think. I have, and my whole family has just a, such a deep appreciation for it. We, we all played at a, a, a relatively, you know, competitive level, and um, and yeah, I think that it's just having been through the trials and tribulations of of golf that no other. It's just different than any other sport. I mean, I grew up playing s s a lot of different sports, but golf just it's. It's just so – it's a reflection of, of who you are as a person. And so for me – Shoot, I, I hope not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in terms of – no, no, maybe not the game specifically in terms of your ability level, but just a real mirror into, like, what your tendencies could be, um, you know, in pressure situations. You know, for, for me um, – I tend, when I get nervous on the golf course, I tend to swing very quickly. And when I get nervous, when a camera's on me, I usually tend to talk very quickly. <laughs> so it's interesting to sort of be able to look at those two things and be like, hey, okay, when I was nervous on a golf course, how was I able to sort of bring my heart rate down? Okay, maybe I can apply those same things into other areas of my life. So I think um, for my family, golf has just become – a, a a way to also like communicate uh, just like a funny story my my little brother 
um, really good looking guy. He's living in the LA golf scene, starting to, you know, date some g- different girls. And he's like, Hallie, he's like, I really like this, this girl, but I have another date planned on Friday. Like, am I allowed to go to that one? He's like, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm trying to join a golf club. And he's like, I don't want to become a member just yet. <laughs> so golf seems to work its way oh, into our great. just the Ledbetter vernacular <laughs> as like, we're like, okay, put it in a way that I can understand. Oh, golf terms. Got it. <laughs> Two more things. Um, this is the fifth anniversary of Tiger's amazing win in 2019. Probably the most amazing thing I've witnessed live as a sports broadcaster and or reporter standing there on 18 and just watching all of that unfold with all of the young players of the game lined up to congratulate the player that inspired them to take up the game, all the former champions in their jackets lined up to congratulate him for uh, overcoming the way he did and and reaching the the mountaintop again and of course you know Charlie running into his arms and we're all instantly whisked back to 97 when he ran into his own father's arms how do you define the magnitude of his influence here and and specifically that 2019 victory I, I don't even think you can put it into words, to be honest. It, it just, tra- I mean, it transcends golf, obviously. It transcends sports, transcends. I, I still remember I would be in, you know, in Ubers, and I would hear my Uber driver talking about it, and, and it was just, it was an amazing moment. I remember I was actually sitting in the media center working at that time, and it was up on the big screens, and I just started bawling. <laughs> it was just, it was really, really it was incredible. I mean, just the the redemption story. I yeah, I think it's just like the ultimate um, sort of poster for you know what it could look like to to come to a comeback story. So I, I think it transcends everything, and that's why it really hit home for so many people. Completely agree. It was so inspirational. About I mean, it's if it's not the greatest comeback story in the history of sports, it's way way up there and. I was saying to someone else earlier today that those of us blessed enough to actually get to be here, they're in some small, like we, we knew we were witnessing history, but also in some small way a part of it, just because we actually were on these grounds and got to kind of walk with the ghosts while he was, while he was doing that. Okay, last thing. We just heard you. I've been asking everybody who they want to win, which is interesting because you were already a step ahead of me. We know who you want to win. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is going to win? Scotty. Scotty. Sheffield, Scotty. I mean, the he's guy. He's playing out of his mind. He's playing out of his mind. I mean, if you're saying anyone else, I I don't know why. <laughs> what, what other? I'm just curious. What other answers have you gotten? Uh, no, I, I get a lot of Scotty. A lot of Scotty. Shufflers. Scotty. Um, I could see if not Scotty, I could see as Andrew Shoffley, maybe him getting his his first major. So if I want, okay, I'll say I'll say Xander uh, just to mix it up. But I feel like ultimately Scotty. I'll be fascinated to see what the live guys do. <laughs> yes, I will you know, too. Because we wonder how is John Rahm yeah. going to do? How is Brooks right. going to do when? Maybe they're not accustomed to playing that extra right. round. But or even as a the fan, intensity of the tournament. Type yeah, of thing. And, and even as a fan, like uh, doing research, I I don't I I feel like it's we've lost a bit of a reference point because we go to look at them like three okay three top fives uh, like I I've never I'm not familiar with the golf course I, I'm not comparing you to the normal guys that would compare you against so I'm also very interested to see how how uh, John's gonna play and and all the guys. Well, none of them are mortal, so yeah. I think that they'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, Thank you, sure. Hallie, so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you for, for having your me. Perspective and friendship and spirit. Thank you. Two golf personalities who thrill viewers all over the world with their content on and off the course are Rick Shields and Seb Carmichael Brown. I met them Wednesday morning at Amen Corner in the most perfect weather imaginable to discuss their experience at the Masters and the blessing of playing around at Augusta. I'm here with Rick Shields and Seb Carmichael Brown, who are tremendous golf content creators, YouTube sensations, and Augusta National veterans. You've both had the great blessing of actually playing here. Some of us are very jealous. What is that experience like? It, it, it's it's a fairy tale. It really is to to have the opportunity to play here. We played after, the Monday after the, the Masters last year, and the night before, I genuinely didn't sleep. Uh, I never cleaned my golf clubs, and 
I was really, I was scr scrubbing them to make sure they were absolutely pristine. I wore a brand new pair of shoes, which to this day have never touched another blade of grass since playing here. They are at retired. home, at home retired. I almost retired the whole set of golf clubs. Uh, but to, I don't think I've ever been as nervous in my life stood on that first tee and, and, you know, quite literally shaking. I could see the shaft of the golf club quite literally shaking. And to be able to stand there and just hope and pray and wish you hit a good shot, which thankfully I did, yeah. that really set the scene and, and played some lovely golf, managed to par 12 behind us, managed to play some, some really nice golf. Not, not all perfect, but it was, a, it was a real fairy tale moment that I loved. And getting to play with this guy as well was also amazing. Yeah, we had a great match that day. I think neither of us lit it up, but it's probably the most I've ever enjoyed walking around a golf property by a considerable distance. You know, we've been so, so fortunate to do so many amazing things in the game of golf. But when you say to somebody, if it comes up in conversation that, you know, you've got to play Augusta National. Which it does come up in conversation. Every, I don't tend to like to bring Every it Every single conversation. <laughs> One out of two, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, that's that stops somebody, you know. It's such a true, true, true blessing to be able to do it. And, uh, yeah, you'll never... I'll never struggle to go through every single shot, but it's the one, you know what? People talk about their rounds of golf. You know, it's never really that interesting to somebody else. I'll tell you what, that round of golf, I remember when I once had a breakfast with Iona Stephen, we were playing golf in France somewhere, and I found out that she'd won the media ballot and she'd played one year. And I stopped, I said, right, stop everything. I need to know every single shot about it. And uh, it's just one of those magical things that will take with me for the rest of my life. Okay, so he parred 12, how'd you do? Uh, I didn't par 12, <laughs> uh, I didn't par 12. I actually um, hit such a bad shot at 12, I didn't even get to the water. Um, but it didn't matter one bit. Had a nice, nice second one in, but managed to get some great um, memories of 16th tee, a nice shot there. I made a nice par on 13, it was quite good. But yeah, this hole, um, when I came here in 2013 with my father, we came out from that entrance right there, that was the first green I saw. And I went into the, uh, to the big master's shop and I bought a framed picture that I still have to this day. It's just that, I mean, that's where we're standing right now. Uh, the 12th green, and obviously the 13th green down there, um, just, just absolutely incredible. It's one of those places that evokes emotion and, and dreams within us uh, before we ever have the blessing of coming here. And so when you, when you try to explain what coming here is like to someone who never has, what do you say? I think it, the cliche is it's so much hillier than people expect. Well, it's, a, it's an accurate statement. It is, because again, you watch it on TV for all those years. You know, I started, I started golf in 1997, and it's no coincidence that in 1997, Tiger Woods won the Masters, and that's really what got me into golf. I wasn't really super interested in golf at that time. And watching the Masters year on year in that whole journey, it feel like you know every single hole. I feel like I know every single hole in this golf course without coming here. Um, and then when you, once you arrive, I was lucky enough to come in 2018, my first trip here. And just a bit, you're in, you're in awe. And it's great today. We've just arrived today. And you can see who, who's maybe here for the first time. Like the jaws are down to the ground. They're taking it all in. They come to Amen Corner. Because again, they might have watched this on TV for 20, 30, 40 years. And bang, they're now here on the property on the grounds. So Rick said it, Seb, that you, because we see it on television growing up, watching it with our parents, and it becomes this generational bond within the families, and you think you know every hole, and you guys have actually stood on those tee boxes and have to shape those shots. What is the difference? Uh, the difference is you have a huge amount of adrenaline running through your body when you're about to do it. But look, standing just behind us there towards the, uh, the 13th green, 2013, I walked through one of the patron's entrances right there with my father, um, and I just, like, I was silent. And then I was like a giddy child. My father, as we stood to the side of the 13th, or to the right of the 13th, he couldn't believe the grass was real. He said, no, it's not real, it's, it's, it's a turf. It's like a plastic, I was like, no, dad, it is really real grass, it is that immaculate. But hitting the shots here, um, one thing I'll always take away from me is like, probably my favorite hole is the 16th hole. And just seeing that shot, we got to play to Sunday pins as well. So you, you get to recreate those moments. Like so much history has happened. It's like every golfer's dream. Um, I'll tell you the difference. When you watch it on TV, those guys can really play golf. They're ridiculous. And when, and when you stand on that tee, <laughs> you realize you're nowhere near you as realize, good. <laughs> realize we're actually mortals. And you find parts of the golf course you've never seen on TV. <laughs> because well, I yeah. didn't realize this was over here. So I think that's also a huge difference because you get to see the greatest players play this tournament week, uh, year in, year out. And the way that they navigate around the golf course is spectacular. And even the changes, like we talked about 13th, how it's got so much longer. You remember Bubba going over the corner and trying to cut it. You, they can't do that now. The hole's got longer, it's more testing. The, the, you remember the shot from Phil Mickelson and the Pines over there. And I think, again, that is what reminds you of uh, what's so special about the Masters, is those special 
special shots. Tiger's chipping on 16, I mean. Greatest golf shot of all time. You go down there and, and you go, this was the spot. I mean, I'm surprised there's not a plaque, but if there was plaques, <laughs> there'd be plaques everywhere. You've now planted the seed and one of somebody's gonna see this and go, you know what, we should memorialize every <laughs> one of these. Well, on the 10th the hole, like I remember going there the first time where Bubba hit it in the playoff, when he hits that wedge out through a gap in the trees, hooks it round to beat Louis Eusthuizen. And I'm like, you don't see that shot. Like, you go and stand there and you're like, how? Like the, the imagination, the artistry, to do it once if you had 10 balls, but to do it under the pressure at that moment, yeah, they, they need to be a plaque down there, I think. I was just watching uh, the great piece you did with Colin Morikawa at Kapalua, and it made me think the relationships you guys are able to build with some of these tour guys must be so special. Uh, who, who have you built relationships with? I mean, like so many of the guys, and the thing is, it, what's beautiful is that, you know, I've been doing this for about eight years now, making golf content, and I've got to, you know, play and film with some of the best players in the world. I've not had a bad experience. I, I genuinely haven't. And they're all so, so humble. And to get to see them hit, like, you know, we're okay golfers, right, but we're just mere mortals. It's a different sound. When you're standing right next to them, the way they hit those shots, I mean, that shot that Colin hit through the trees, I stood there, I, I never knew that was possible, to play it through a tree, under one tree, over another one, to take on that shot. It's just, they are truly playing a different game. All right, before we get you guys out of here, I gotta have a winner. So, so I've asked other people, not who they think is gonna win, but who they want to win. Rick, who do you want to win? Talk about forging relationships with players. Uh, one of my, to be honest, has become a real friend of mine is Tommy Fleetwood. I've what a to, great dude. I've filmed with him a few times. I've got to meet him, his wife. They've been all, always so incredible to me. I texted him last night and said, you know, good luck and I hope everything goes well. And, you know, for me, my, my, my heart, I would love to see Tommy Fleetwood in a green jacket come Sunday. All right. Look, I'm going to say the one that's been on a lot of people's lips as well. I've managed to meet him a number of times. Um, it's going to be Rory McIlroy. Uh, he once sent a birthday message to me uh, many, many years ago when he was met my brother randomly. He didn't know who I was at the time. And uh, I would love to see him finally get the career Grand Slam this week. So I would love to see Rory get the green jacket. What's a Rory McIlroy birthday message consist of? Um, it said, happy birthday, Seb. <laughs> so it was, that was the extent of, OK, great. Who's your, who's your pick? I'm, I don't really do, picking is certainly not my talent. Um, it's, it's in all the, mine. all the sports that I cover at ESPN, I'm often asked who's going to win, and I my my line is always that's why they pay, pay this guy and that guy and that gal all those millions of dollars so they can take all the feedback from the picks. Um, well, who's your heart I, telling you? Well, I would love to see Rory win it too, but I'm also very close with Tony Finau. And I would love to see him because he just has such a beautiful spirit and a wonderful heart for other people. And I was with him on the second fairway. I walked the entire second hole with him to sort of break down the changes for ESPN. And he was sharing with me how much 2018 means to him in his heart. First time he came here. He's someone who was inspired by Tiger Woods to take up the game. He gets injured. He overcomes that injury and plays extremely well. And he said as he exited the 72nd hole, I felt like I needed or, or I'd earned the green jacket because of the performance. And he's just a wonderful to person. Get, to get to play with Tiger in 2019, he saw the it. final round, he, he had the front, right front row seat. That was maybe the greatest experience I've ever had professionally standing on the 18th when Tiger won that 2019 Masters. It was, it was genuinely emotional. Oh, very emotional. All of us were not only witnessing history, but we were in some small way a part of, of it you because were. we were there. And were. so just a blessing beyond words. So great to spend time Thank with you, you both this Thank morning, so brother. I love your spirit. Thank you guys. so much. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Another group of gentlemen who have experience on the course here are the five members of Dude Perfect. Granted, their experience is one of a kind. Four of those members, Tyler, Garrett, Kobe, and Corey, joined me at Amen Corner to celebrate the 15-year anniversary of the creation of Dude Perfect. All right, it is always awesome to see my great friends from Dude Perfect. We're down here at Amen Corner. Gentlemen, you guys are like staples of the Masters. <laughs> I think I've covered 10 Masters now. I see you guys every time. However, you guys have done things on this golf course that nobody else has ever done on this golf course. All right, today I think is 15 years. It is. Right? it is. 15 years since you started this amazing empire you have built collectively as a brotherhood. 15 years ago? It was, to the day. Would you ever have imagined 
never. that this would be your life and have the opportunity to be a staple at the greatest sporting event in the world. <laughs> never thought we'd ever step foot out here, create a viral video, a brand, anything. Never. 2009, we're watching the Masters from our house and we buy DudePerfect.com yep. while watching it in front of our TV. I remember True it. Story. Wait a minute, so the Masters is the catalyst. It's yeah. Inspired it all. Yeah. We're full circle. $13? Thirteen dollars. Thirteen dollars. We're gonna say like the search engine, you, you whatever that that, that hosted it at <laughs> first. Daddy, that's very okay. Right. NASCAR. It's the only okay. one I can think of. But very good. So all of you guys have to have uh, a certain special memory that's special to you here. What is it? Um, man, I don't, for me, my boys are just starting to get to the age where we can sit down and watch sports together. And so they know Johnny Rombo and that we've filmed videos together and that we kind of hang out. And so to watch him win it last year with my boys, like actually dialed in, paying attention was pretty special. And, and getting to do that with them was awesome. Garrett? Yeah, I mean, I said watching Tiger win it in 2019 has got to be got to be up there but i just eaten a barbecue sandwich really i mean just special pretty just special every every year i gotta say throw in a nerd vortex on 11. that's pretty good okay somebody that's it oh you guys have a nice day we're we're done here oh that's that's yeah it's tough to improve on just walking the grounds are unbelievable i mean it's just such a special place it's, it's a real privilege to be here when you receive a phone call that they're actually going to let you do that here <laughs> and trust me it's not easy to get anything yeah. done here. What was the reaction when they called you guys and told you that was gonna happen? We went through a few ideas. The, the, the first year we were out here, we filmed some social content for the Masters, and we were like, that was, I mean, members were telling us like, I can't believe that happened, like yeah. that was crazy. We got to, put, we got to like film, film us Berkman, putting on and we're the, like, yeah. yo, the first people to film in Berkman. So then like, when they were like, hey, what if you could film a video out here? We were like, well. Overtime, maybe. I mean, Talk that would show. be that'd be crazy. Here's here's a couple of different ideas, and uh, one of them was uh, they were like, "Hey, you know, if it was a limited time, if you had an hour, two two hours, you know, what could you do out there?" Like, well, we know this would never happen, but our all sports golf battles are a lot of fun. You know, Amen Corner would obviously be like, but "It's not going to happen, get, but we, we get, get it." But we on get to the it. next idea, <laughs> and they came back and they're like, "Hey, yeah, we we think the all sports golf battles a good idea. That's going to work." And we're like. Then now we're questioning it. <laughs> like, well, hold on. Are we sure that's what we want to do? Then we think the Masters really started getting into prank videos. Yeah. You know, we're in. It's on they're us. pranking us. And anyways, we do the video. The chairman approves it. He watches it. He's doing press interviews about it after. But I think the email that we got from a dad summed up why we did that video in the first place. And it was just, hey, thanks, dude, perfect. My son, who never wants to watch sports, could care less, just asked me to record the Masters so we could sit down and watch where Dude Perfect filmed their all-sports golf battle. And, man, that was awesome. As really guys who now all have young kids and know the importance of hanging out with them as a family and stuff is, is pretty special. It's just wonderful to have belonging yeah. and, and that type of impact. I can't imagine what that must feel like for you guys 15 years to the day. Congratulations Thank on just a Thanks, tremendous Marty. business. Before I let you run, Every one of you guys, I don't care who you think is going to win. Who do you want to win? Is it Rombo again? Uh, I wouldn't mind. Fourth ever, yeah, back to back champion. I think that'd be pretty special. Garrett's got so tough, his man. Guy. We're, we're good friends with a bunch of players. See, that's why I said it that way because I want you to have to make a very difficult decision. <laughs> a very distinct answer. Uh, then I'm going I'm to go Will's Outdoors. Yeah, he's, he's sticking great, with it. Yeah. Kid. I'm going to go Rory. We filmed with him this year and love that guy. I'd love for him to break the drought. I just want that for him, man. I want it. I got to go Scotty. I got this guy. I would love to see it again. Okay, Amazing. we've gone. You got your four answers. Really gone out on a limb yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real stretch. Real All stretch. right, quickly with Rory. Uh, what what was it like to spend time with him? He was incredible. We, He's like the nicest guy ever. Yeah, it was Fantastic. a world record video, and in our past experience with us breaking world records, it takes a little longer. We set him <laughs> up through like. Dude, Roy, it's gonna be tough, but we just need you to hit 10. How long were the drives? 300, 300, 300 yard drives, drives in the fairway in X amount of time. And he's like, okay, bum, 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 bum. All right, what do we wanna do now? <laughs> Let's just move he's, on. He's it very efficient at breaking world records. Incredible. Yeah, he's very good. But he's, he's great, obviously. He's a he's wonderful great. person. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I had a world record for a few minutes. Did you know that? Uh, 76 foot cornhole shot <laughs> on live television. <tournament. laughs> I actually think you told us okay. this last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You bring that one up. You work it in the whole time. Out of it at all. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. <laughs> Coming up Thursday on Four Please Now Driving are some drivers. NASCAR stars Chase Elliott, Bubba Wallace, and defending Cup Series champion Ryan Blaney will join the show. I can't wait to hear how Augusta compares to Daytona. 
Thank you all so much for spending your time with us. I'm your host, Marty Smith. We are so grateful to share the Master's Mystique with you each day on 4 Please Now Driving.